Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Arirang News Break. It's Thursday, July 14th here in Korea and live from Seoul. I'm Han Daeun. We we'll begin at the presidential office of Chongwade. President Park Geun-hye is set to chair a National Security Council meeting this morning prior to her departure to Mongolia for the ASEM summit. The meeting will likely center on the follow-up measures after Seoul and Washington's decision to deploy the U.S. missile defense system THAAD to Songju, Gyeongsangbuk-do province. President Park will also call on the military to maintain a high level of defense readiness during her five-day trip to Mongolia. During during her stay there, the South Korean leader will call for international support in reining North Korea's nuclear ambitions, both at the ASEM summit and bilateral talks with her Mongolian counterpart. Lawmakers are expected to fire questions at government officials regarding the issue of allocating this year's supplementary budget, continuing their special committee on budget and accounts meeting. For more, we go to our Shin Semin at the National Assembly. Semin, tell us more. Good morning, Tan. The Q&A session is expected to begin soon, and one of the main talking points is expected to be regarding the extra budget plan set to be submitted to the parliament later this month. Now, the focus here is that the money expected to be spent this year is likely to be double the size of the last year's supplementary budget spent directly to regional economy, as portions of last year's extra fund had been used to make up for the losses caused by last year's MERS outbreak. Now, the government is hinting that this year's extra budget will be around 6 trillion won, or some 5.2 billion U.S. dollars, the largest amount since 2009, considering that its sole purpose is to boost the regional economy. In the past, government has allocated extra government funds in the case of natural disasters or a recession, like after the sinking of Sewolho Ferry in 2014 and the outbreak of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome last year deeply affected the economy. The finance ministry says the government and the ruling Tenuri party will go over the details of this year's extra budget plan on Friday. Tan? Thank you, Semin, for that. This just in, Korea's central bank has held its key rate steady at 1.25 percent. The rate freeze comes after a surprise cut in June. It was a move widely expected by market analysts as the central bank has never lowered its policy rate for two straight months. Uh, the wait-and-see approach also comes as the central bank uh, gauges the impact of government stimulus package announced late last month. We'll bring you more details in our next news cast at noon. Theresa May has taken over as Britain's new prime minister, heading straight to 10 Downing Street after meeting Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham Palace. The 59-year-old is Britain's second female prime minister and replaces David Cameron, who stepped down after losing the referendum on Britain's EU membership. Park jong hong has the story. The UK has ushered in a new British prime minister. Theresa May, in her inaugural remarks as Britain's second female PM in history, vowed to lead a one-nation government that works for everyone. We will rise to the challenge. As we leave the European Union, we will forge a, forge a bold new positive role for ourselves in the world. And we will make Britain a country that works not for a privileged few, but for every one of us. She said it would be her mission to, quote, build a better Britain. In a bold move upon taking office, Theresa May was quick to appoint Boris Johnson, the prominent yet controversial Leave EU campaigner, as her foreign secretary. She sacked Finance Minister George Osborne, replacing him with Philip Hammond. May also named David Davis the Secretary of State for exiting the EU, a newly created position. Liam Fox has the role as Secretary of State for International Trade, a pivotal position as Britain finds itself having to sign a slew of new trade deals. Hoping to unite a divided nation after the referendum, Theresa May's new cabinet lineup is seen to reflect a good balance of figures who had either opposed or endorsed the Brexit initiative. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News.
North Korea appears to be making progress in its submarine-launched ballistic missile development, and leader Kim Jong-un seems determined to make it a success. This is according to Joseph Bermudez, co-founder and chief analytic officer of All Source Analysis. Speaking at a briefing organized by North Korea monitoring site 38 North, Bermudez said North Korea seems to be taking steps forward with each test and predicted that at this rate, the regime will attempt or will succeed succeed at a full range test sometime in the next 12 months. He said the biggest challenges facing the North's SLBM development are quality control and system integration. If and when completed, Bermudez warned, Pyongyang's SLBM capabilities would pose significant threats as they can be launched from different locations. Scorching heat and humid conditions are persisting in Korea. Afternoon highs nationwide are forecast to top 30 degrees Celsius pretty much everywhere. A heat wave watch has been issued in parts of Gyeonggi-do, Gangwon-do, and Gyeongsang-do provinces. There's a 60 to 80 percent chance of rain over the course of the day. Up to 20 millimeters is forecast for inland areas due to atmospheric instability. As for Korea's northeastern coast, a heavy rain watch has been issued. The humid and rainy conditions are expected to last through Saturday as a monsoonal front gradually moves northward. Exactly one year ago, Arirang TV became the first Korean broadcaster to be included on the UN's in-house network. Arirang TV is one of only 19 UN in-house channels, along with international broadcasters like CNN and BBC World and major American news networks like NBC and ABC. The channel provides various programs centered around news and information on Korea's current affairs. Adirang TV will be on the UN's in-house network for five years, and the partnership will be re uh, reviewed when deciding to renew the contract or not. And that does it for now. Keep you tuned to Adirang for more domestic and global news updates throughout the day. Thank you for watching.